There's a forest in the west of Ireland that's not on any map. They say it lures people who get lost and never lets them go. John is now running through it trying to find his way out before nightfall. His watch has stopped and he keeps coming back to the same place, not to mention the many signs with different numbers pointing to the point of no return. Suddenly a flock of birds flies over John and he notices that it is night and tries to climb a tree to hide. Unfortunately, the branch breaks and he falls. Terrified, John reaches into his bag for his knife, but a mysterious creature appears and drags him away before he can defend himself. Meanwhile, in the city, Mina, an American immigrant and artist, works in a pet store. One afternoon, her boss introduces her to a bird that needs to be taken to a zoo in a neighboring town and asks her to do it. Mina names the bird Darwin and takes it home. She tells him that today is the 15th anniversary of her mother's death, so she will go to visit today to forget herself. She puts on a wig and goes to a bar under an assumed name to meet the guys. The next morning, she asks Darwin not to judge her, explaining that she likes playing dress up because she doesn't like the real her. She drives out of town in her car to make a delivery, driving through the countryside and stopping only to get gas. During the trip, her twin sister calls her, but Mina doesn't pick up the phone and listens to the voicemail. The sister reprimands Mina for not attending their mother's wake and says it's been 15 years and it's time for Mina to stop avoiding her family. Ignoring the message, Mina drives off in her car, not noticing a sign with dozens of missing persons notices. Moments later, Mina crosses into the woods and gets lost. Her phone and car radio begin to fail right before the car breaks down, leaving Mina stranded. She gets out of the car and finds a point of no return sign that makes her think someone lives nearby. Mina returns to the car, takes her bag and Darwin, and then starts wandering around crying out for help. Nothing happens and Mina decides to go back, but when she turns around the car is gone. Now she has no choice but to continue wandering around looking for a way out. When night falls, a flock of birds suddenly flies over her. She hears hears some sounds and notices an elderly woman running nearby. Desperate, Mina runs after her and sees her enter a building where the woman tells her to hurry inside if she wants to live. Mina does so and finds two more people inside. The old woman says her name is Madeline and the others are Sierra and Daniel. They got lost in the woods too so they are now hiding there. The group drags Mina to the mirrored window and Madeline explains that the creatures outside are called watchers. They come every night to watch through the window and leave by sundown. Madeline makes Mina take a step forward, and the watchers are heard clapping their hands in greeting. Afterward, Mina sits and stares at the mirrored window, thinking of her mother. In the morning, Mina leaves the coop without heeding the warnings of the others. As she wanders alone, she hears her name being whispered and notices a girl in the distance asking her why she did what she did. Frightened, Mina starts running and makes it to the top of a hill, where she realizes she is in the middle of nowhere with no end in sight. When Mina returns, Madeline tells her that they all tried to leave but no one could. The forest causes hallucinations and can drive a person insane. The signs are landmarks placed in a circle half a day's journey from the coop and they serve as a boundary. Crossing the boundary means there's no going back. These signs were built by someone called the Professor. Mina has no choice but to return with the others to the coop. That evening, Daniel gives a speech to announce Mina's return to the show and Sierra turns up the music to dance for the audience. They find some DVDs from the reality show and Mina tries to distract herself with them by noticing the Professor's name on the back of the box. The next morning, the group sets out to find food and Sierra teaches Mina how to recognize medicinal plants. Sierra explains that Daniel often has headaches and that according to John, Sierra liked him. John is Sierra's husband. He left six days ago but hasn't been heard from since. Sierra also shares Madeline's theory that an encounter with a watcher a person might not be able to handle. She then shows Mina a burrow, explaining that the forest is filled with them. They are connected underground by a system of tunnels and that is where the watchers live during the day. To Mina's surprise, Sierra says that she and John came here about five months ago, though she no longer remembers exactly how long she's been here. Later during lunch, Madeline teaches Mina the rules of survival. They must not turn their backs to the mirror, can't open the door when it's dark, stay out of dens, and always be where there is light. The three of them read the rules together in a rather creepy manner. As the days go by, Mina tries to keep herself busy by watching reality TV shows and sketching in her notebook. In the evenings, she looks in the mirror and hears some sounds outside, but is skeptical of them. One night, she goes to bed too early and the creatures outside start roaring and squealing. Then Madeline makes her look in the mirror until they calm down. After a while, Daniel goes to check the animal traps, mentioning that he used to hunt with John. Mina follows and keeps seeing that little girl in the woods. Daniel explains that Madeline used to be a teacher at the university, so she thinks she knows everything. He's been here for eight months and Mina finds it odd that he's never seen a watcher. Daniel and Mina admit to 
being skeptical of Madeline's story, and Mina suggests going into the burrow, ignoring Daniel's frightened protests. Using the rope Daniel is holding, Mina goes down into the burrow and examines it with a lighter. She finds many abandoned items, including a newspaper from 1992, a video camera, and a stuffed rabbit. There is also a bicycle that Mina sends to Daniel on a rope. At this point, she hears a strange noise in the darkness, and Mina calls out to Daniel, but he doesn't answer. Suddenly, a hand with six fingers speaking a strange language slowly reaches out and Mina screams again. This time, she manages to retrieve the rope. Moments later, Mina shows Sierra and Madeline all the things they brought from the pit, saying they found them under a large rock. Mina thinks the bike might help them escape. Madeline disagrees, and she can tell that Mina saw something. She keeps asking her about it, but Mina denies it. Meanwhile, Daniel plugs the camera into the power source in the chicken coop, explaining that the professor must have installed it when he built the place. By hooking up a TV to it, they now have a basic surveillance system. That evening, the group waits at the table for something to appear on the screen. Suddenly, Sierra hears a noise and feet appear in the camera. Someone is knocking on the door. Person speaks and Sierra is pleased to hear John begging them to let him in. Madeline immediately forbids, reminding Sierra that the watchers may be playing a trick on them to lure them in. Madeline forces her to ask what only he might know. Unfortunately, John can't remember what book Madeline is reading, even though they bought it together because it reminded him of her. Sierra is still in denial but asks John to get his face on camera. At this point, John appears on the screen and asks for help and is dragged away. Then something hits the camera, shattering it. The group runs to stand in front of the mirror and an enraged onlooker outside hits it several times until it splits. The next morning, Madeline throws her bike back into the burrow, hoping to calm the watchers. Mina promises she won't break the rules again. The whole, the bike is dragged away into the darkness. A flashback shows young Mina riding in a car with her sister and mother, and it is revealed that the girl in the woods looks like twins. Mina continued to break the rules, which caused an argument with her mother, who was closing the window and caught Mina's fingers. Her screaming distracted the mother, and this led to the accident. In the present, Mina continues to sketch signs and comments on the fact that the forest is playing with her mind by marking trees she has already checked out. Weeks pass, the days getting colder and shorter. Everyone has lost all hope of rescue and is starting to crack at the seams. Mina overhears Madeline snapping at Daniel, scolding him for not catching anything in a while and they may starve to death soon. In the coop, Sierra ignores all the bickering and watches a reality show while Mina continues to draw on the floor. Suddenly, she turns around and notices that Sierra has disappeared. Mina runs into the woods and finds Sierra standing by a hole contemplating self-destruction to be with John again. That moment, they hear a scream and go to the noise to find Daniel tying up Madeline. She says that Daniel has gone nuts, but Daniel just announces that they will play by their own rules now and runs back to the coop. Sierra runs after him, but Mina stays behind to free Madeline. The duo then return to the coop, but find that Daniel and Sierra have locked the door. Birds start flying around them, and so they only have to run and hide in one of the traps, which has a rotting smell that can hide their scent. While Sierra and Daniel are standing in front of the mirror, a watcher finally appears over the trap, but he can't detect the women and runs to the coop. He stands up to his full height and roars, summoning more imposing watchers. When they get too close to the coop, Daniel informs them that two of them are missing, and the watchers set off to find the missing women. When the area around the coop is cleared, Mina and Madeline run up to the door and beg for mercy. Mina begins to talk about how it was her fault her mother died, and how she can't live with the guilt, and tells Daniel that he will be haunted by the same mistake. The door finally opens, and the duo rush inside then lock it again. Madeline immediately berates Daniel and tells him that she should have killed him months ago, but now it's more important to deal with the watchers. The group stands in front of the window, and Madeline tells them that she used to teach folklore and mythology. She came to the forest for research, and the first night she saw a watcher who looked like a deformed version of her. Watchers appear in many classic stories and are also known as changelings or fairies. They want to observe people in order to study them and eventually become them. Suddenly, a watcher knocks on the door, copying Sierra's voice and begging for help. Soon more watchers start climbing over the coop, imitating the voices of the humans to try and lure them out of there. After the group pushes a table in front of the door, they hear a strange noise and notice a square on the floor under the carpet. As the watchers outside behave more and more aggressively, Daniel hits the square until it opens and they discover the bunker. The group immediately go downstairs with Darwin and close the hatch just before the watchers go completely insane in the coop. Turning on the lights, they discover the place where the professor used to work. It's full of files, books, and food that will keep them going for a long time. There is also a very old computer here that has no internet access but Mina finds a series of records started in the year 2009. Professor Rory tells how he is mesmerized 
mesmerized by the creatures that watch him through the window. Each clip shows Rory gradually losing his mind, and eventually he says that the people he hired to build the chicken coop were being killed every day by the observers. In another clip, he mentions that a watcher appeared to him in the form of a little girl, and he wonders if people can use this power. In the next recording, Rory manages to catch the watcher and tries to befriend it. The creature was furious. The last video was recorded on day 300 and Rory admitted defeat. He planned to kill himself and the watcher, but he had a message in case someone found out. He left a boat on the river, number 134, which can be found by following the birds. Rory also asked the viewer to go to his office at the university and destroy all his stuff. Mina cries after hearing gunshots in the recording. The group agrees to go on a boat in the morning. The next morning, the group follows Mina's trail until they find sign 134. There they free Darwin and begin to follow him. Eventually they find a stone marker and Madeline explains that this is where the fairies were imprisoned after losing the war with the humans. Since then they have been trying to return but have lost their wings and magic and so now can't stand the sun. As the group runs Mina keeps seeing little girls nearby. Soon it begins to rain and birds fly around them, heralding the coming of night. The group hears the watchers approaching, so they hurry until they reach the river. The women manage to get into the boat. Daniel hears John's voice and freezes. A few seconds later, Daniel appears, dragging John to shore and Sierra tries to warn him that he's not real, but it's too late. The fake John changes shape and kills Daniel with his claws. Then his body goes numb and more watchers surround him and watch the trio as they row away. Madeline tells the others not to worry because the watchers cannot leave the forest. In the morning, the women and Darwin finally find a bridge, cross it, and wait for a bus to pass by. Luckily, the driver lets them in and they can relax on their way back to town. Later, while taking a shower, Mina keeps remembering her mother's death. She was lying in the middle of the road and her sister was calling out to her showing the scars on her face. The next day, Mina goes to the university to fulfill Rory's last wish by pretending to be his niece. She discovers a blueprint of a chicken coop, the first draft of a research paper on the watchers, and a tape recorder with some of Rory's research that follows an illustrated scroll. Before the war, fairies lived peacefully with humans, befriending and sometimes mating. These couples produced half-breed children who could walk in the sun and Rory believes they could continue to hide in human society. Mina looks at the huge work of art and finds some photos that shock her. In the evening, Mina visits Sierra and shows her the photos, which reveal that Madeline was Rory's wife. However, she died in the year 2001 of lung cancer. Mina assumes that Rory was trying to use the observer he captured to get his wife back and that he was the Madeline they met. At this point, a car pulls up to the house and the real Sierra appears, which means that Madeline's watcher has been pretending to be Sierra for Mina all along. The real Sierra enters the house and the watcher crawls across the ceiling and turns into John and uses his voice to distract Sierra and punch her unconscious. Mina tries to run away but the watcher catches up with her and starts throwing her around, complaining about people and taking the form of Daniel. As Mina falls, a mirror shatters and she grabs a shard to defend herself, but the watcher just drags her along, thanking her for helping him out. The watcher then goes outside, taking Madeline's form and explains that he always wanted to leave the forest because the other watchers mocked him for being able to walk in the sun. They called him a day walker and a freak, so he went to Rory in hopes that he would help him escape. However, when Rory tried to shoot him, the watcher killed him first. In just a few seconds, the watcher transforms into Rory and then into Mina, grabbing the real woman by the neck to kill her and take her body. Mina says that Rory had a secret and the watcher leaves her to let her talk. Having learned about half-bloods and that there are many more hiding among the humans, the watcher realizes that while living as Madeline, he was able to feel human emotions due to his mixed blood and suddenly his body transforms, revealing wings. He flies out onto the roof and tells Mina that he hopes the girl said and there are more like him before he flies away. Mina then checks on Sierra's condition which thankfully is fine. After a while, Mina finally visits her sister and her children to reconcile. She also shares her experience in the forest, explaining that sometimes she feels as if Madeline's watcher is hiding in the crowd and watching her. It takes many forms but the most common is the little girl Rory saw. In the window Darwin is watching the streets and the watcher is watching him back. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.